Hey, today we're going to be talking about an AI shopping assistant that I built. We're going to go through some of the designs uh, as well as a demo. And then at the end, I'll try to showcase some of the code that went into building this. Uh, and if you're new here, my name is Levente and this channel, Journeyman AI, I try to just showcase what I'm working on as I build my consultancy and some of the SaaS products that I'm looking to iterate on. I'm sure you've had the experience of walking in. For me, it's always like a Walgreens or a pharmacy. And I don't know exactly what I need. I don't know where it's located. Uh, you know, I'm maybe trying to Google some ingredients or product reviews online. So you obviously don't have the same amount of information when you're in store as when you're online. And uh, customer service is pretty poor across the board, to be honest. And in some cases, it'd be really helpful. You know, at a Home Depot or a Best Buy, it'd be really helpful if there was just better customer service or there was something that was just trained to help you versus just Googling things yourself. So that's high level <laughs> what we're trying to solve. The problem is that this retailer, retail in-store specifically shopping experience is very high friction. It's difficulty, to fi difficulty finding items and you're not really marketed to. So I don't think the customer uh, is really considered as much as they are when they're online. And there's not as many incentives thrown at them. Uh, so as a solution, we're going to make a chat or SMS-based assistant that can help customers find items, explain product details, and try to market to them a little bit more. And as a goal for the MVP, we're going to be working on a Sephora data set that I found. Sephora is a cosmetics makeup store, and a lot of those products are really tiny. You know, you might be interested in some specific ingredient or it not having that ingredient, right? So I think it's a good use case. Um, and I did find a data set for it. So I think just for the purposes of a demo, I think it's interesting. Here is the data set, which is over 9,000 unique items, over 300 brands and over 140 product categories. As an example, you know, one of these might be Fenty Beauty Foundation. You could see that it's $35. You have a link to the product. You have all kinds of you know, usage instructions, ingredients, right? So we have a very rich data set. And um, step one will be, you know, how do we actually recommend the user? User might ask for a specific kind of product. How do we find it in this data set? Just, you know, how do we set that up? And then basically we want to integrate that into an AI chat assistant. So as an MVP, we're going to have um, we're going to combine basically an OpenAI GPT LLM with uh, what's called a vector-based self-querying retriever. That's going to be what's finding product recommendations. So basically when the user asks for a specific type of product with these constraints, we're going to use that tool to get them the product. So here's an example. I'm looking for the highest rated mineral sunscreen and a moisturizer that works well for oily skin. I want to keep my budget under $40. So you can see it's like a natural language that's the, the customer's asking this question uh, just in plain English and uh, we need to find the products or alternatives to those products that we find if needed. So as a step one, we could just talk about document embedding. So this is just, uh, we basically need to build the tool before we can integrate it to the rest of this AI assistant. Um, if you don't know about retrieval augmented generation, I highly recommend you read up on it. It's, I guess, like a standard technique for leveraging text-based data and searching through text-based data. So very high level, you know, when the customer asks for one of those questions, like a specific product, we, have, we, take, we embed all these uh, products as different documents. And when the customer asks that question, we embed their question and we match it in our data set to the most similar, semantically similar uh, products. And then we feed those uh, results to an LLM, and then the LLM generates a question off of that. So, but we actually need to take this a step further by using what, what's called a self-querying retrieval. So here, <coughs> it's basically uh, not just adding in the product descriptions as text, but also we are adding metadata like the rating, the price, the brand. So actually the um, when the user asks that question, we can apply certain metadata filters to be very specific. So when the when if they say they want you know the price to be under twenty dollars, 
we first filter by less than $20, and then we apply effectively the retrieval augmented generation part to get them the product uh, that they're looking for. So I'll, I'll show you later how this is put together, but next step will be the agent design, which is pretty simple in this case. I'm using something called Langgraph, which <coughs> effectively you have a product search tool, that's the tool, and you have an LLM, which is GPT-4, and then at each stage of the conversation, the agent determines, do we need to use the search tool to answer the, the user's question? If it does, it, it queries that, passes it back to the LLM, and then the LLM generates a response. Um, so basically, it's not always using that tool on every question, because not all the questions the customer asks will be product related. <coughs> so now we can move forward to the demo, and I'll see you there. OK, we have here the assistant. We could just prompt it by saying, hey, and uh, we can have a simple conversation. I'm looking for some sunscreen. In the beginning, it's uh, just going to be using the um, you know, chat formulation. So it's not using that vector uh, tool. OK. Um, do you have any specific price range in mind? So let's just say I'm looking for something uh, less than fifteen dollars um, and a mineral sunscreen. Now it should be using the uh, vector lookup tool. Okay. So you could see here it's found everything fourteen ninety nine. This one's fifteen ninety nine, and it actually says slightly over budget, and the other ones are within budget. Um, okay, so let's pick the one with the highest SPF. So let's do this one, number four. This is a mineral sunscreen. How about number four? How many total ingredients are in there? Let's just, we can ask questions about the product, you know, in some other examples, it might make more sense. You know, if you're looking for something and it's trying to exclude some allergies, OK, it has 18 ingredients in total. You could see here zinc oxide, so forth. Um, OK, and then you could say, give me the link to purchase. Now, these links, I think, are out of date just because of the, uh, the data set. But this would be obviously something. And you could, we could extract like an image out of here. So you get the idea. It's a very simple uh, chat flow right now. Um, but the, the product recommending components working. It's pretty responsive. So obviously, there's work to be done to add on to this, but this is currently how this demo is working for these products. OK, so here we have our Flask app, which is very simple back end that I've built for this demo. And uh, we're using a lot of LangChain and LangGraph. It's my first time working with LangGraph, but it's a very interesting tool uh, to build agents. And uh, we're effectively creating this um, this uh, LangGraph object with a tool appended to it. So this, uh, you could ignore this write file tool, but basically this is the lookup policy or the search, the object search. Uh, so this is defined in a separate file, which I'll go into. But effectively here, the description to this tool tells you how and when to use this, uh, this tool. So effectively, by adding this description that this is like our product search in Sephora, then um, the LLM knows when to invoke it. So we load an LLM, which is GPT-4, and we bind to it these tools. But really, this is the only tool we're using, the lookup policy. And then we define a chatbot state, which has um, basically it uh, it uses that LLM with those tools bound to it. So it can, it can know when to invoke the different tools that you have. Uh, and then you construct your Lang graph here, which is effectively one node for the chatbot and then uh, one node for the tools. And you also define some edges between the uh, chatbot and the tools. You set an entry point here. Uh, so it's always starting from the, from the chatbot and uh, and then you compile it with this um, with this uh, SQLite 
um, memory. So, which basically this allows us to store the state of the uh, conversation. And if we uh, had this as defined in a regular um, SQL database, then we could save the conversation and we could restart there uh, if the user, say, comes back to the screen at a later date. So I think that is definitely um, just a very high level overview. But once you've created this land graph uh, object, you can define uh, different sessions through this config here. And then we have two routes. One of them is to load just the uh, index.html, the uh, chat you know, interface. And then the other one is every time a user clicks send on that uh, chat interface, it effectively invokes our graph object here and, um, and generates a response from the assistant. And then we, we output the response there. So very simple. I think um, if you have any questions, I'm not sure I, I did this real justice explaining this. Uh, it's my first time working with LangGraph. Um, so I think I, I would love to just learn more about this in the upcoming videos. But what I can go into is a little bit about this specific tool. So, right, like the bulk of the interesting stuff here, I guess, is that uh, this uh, agent is able to leverage this lookup tool as needed, right? The self-querying retriever. So that's defined in a separate file. I, I actually import this retriever here. Um, from a separate file called document retriever. And uh, this is basically uh, where we are, we took that uh, Sephora dataset CSV, and what we do is we create effectively like uh, text fields. So we combine all the data together into one combined text field. So any of the, uh, I guess, text data like the brand, the category, the name, instructions, ingredients, we um, group that into one text field called combined text. And then uh, we also have a separate metadata field where we're putting in things like the brand category, price, number of reviews, URL, product size, and things like that. So these are the metadata fields that we can then filter by. And then the combined text, um, column is basically what we're going to be using um, our embeddings on. So I, I want to say here we're creating just the documents. Um, for testing purposes, I had just limited to the first 300 documents. Then we use this thing called Chroma DB, where effectively it saves uh, the vector database in a file called AI Shopping Chroma DB. So you could see here it's it's saving, um, it's setting a path for this vector database here. And then um, we load our OpenAI embeddings. So OpenAI has their GPT models, but they also have separate embedding models that you can use to turn basically these combined text type uh, text uh, data into vectors. And then we can use those vectors for search and query and other things. So um, basically, then what we do is, um, so basically, if we need to generate the embeddings, then we loop through our documents. We generate an embedding vector from the page content, which is that combined text column. and uh, you know, I, I'm actually saving these separately, and then we add in uh, to our collection, basically the uh, the embedding vector, the document, like the raw text, and the metadata, and an ID. So that's our collection. So that's basically our, our vector database there. Um, and we construct this vector store like this. And then, so this vector store, you're now able to actually query um and and use like a similarity search functionality on it um next step basically we we define these uh metadata fields so uh for all those um columns like brand category price rating we actually define 
you know, what uh, data type that is, descriptions of that. And then this is going to allow us um, to create that self-querying retrieval. So we have the vector store and we add into it basically these metadata fields that you see here. And then um, this retriever is now able to uh, effectively filter by the metadata and use the combined text description of the product to find the, the best matches given the user query. So that's high level how this uh, self-querying retriever is working. Um, I really think just vector embeddings in general are such an interesting topic. I, I'll probably do another video on that. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty simple flow. We really just have a, a Flask app. There's really only one tool that we're using, which is that vector lookup tool. And um, But you can imagine it, it's very easy here to just add a new function with a new tool. You know, I was testing out one thing that was effectively like writing a file. So we could have the agent basically write to file or it could do a Google search or you can have all kinds of other tools appended to it. And, um, and LangGraph makes it pretty easy to make that as fail safe as possible. All right, as a conclusion, uh, I think, I, I really like this kind of, uh, you know, tooling because I would use it. <laughs> you know, that's how you identify a good idea is would you actually use that if it was available to you? And in certain stores, I think it's highly needed to have a better customer service experience and help you find the products you're looking for. Um, I think the next step for me is that obviously if a business needed me to build this out, that would be perfect. But if I had the uh, availability of the products as well as the location and store, imagine you could just the customer in the beginning tells you what they want. You can route them through the store in like the closest path. So they're like even minimizing what they're walking. If it's like a really big store, you know, like an Ikea, then you could actually kind of improve the customer's, you know, exertion level through the store. Uh, next thing also, which I didn't focus on too much now, is the upselling. But obviously, if there's discounts, complimentary products, you can kind of try to maximize the customer purchase size, which obviously is good for the businesses. And um, <clears throat> as a last note, if you see any potential for this type of shopping assistant in any business, your business, or you want to combine this with some kind of other concept, just reach out to me at levente at journeymanai.io. I'd love to collaborate with you. And if you're a student who's looking to learn more about AI, also feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help you out with anything that you're interested in or trying to build. Thanks for watching.